Welcome to Sunday Spotlight. I'm David Meyer. Today we feature encore excerpts of an interview that CARES Neil Weiland had Friday in honor of Veterans Day with retired Sergeant Scott Stevenson and his mother, Luana Schneider. Scott was injured in an explosion in Iraq in 2006, causing burns and part of his left leg to be amputated. As a result, the duo started Tempered Steel, Inc. to get the message out that those severely disabled by accidents are still very productive members of society. Talk about that day when you got injured. Um, actually, it's coming up. Um, on November 25th will be the fifth year anniversary of um, me getting hit in Iraq. We uh, drove over um, an improvised explosive device, a uh, roadside bomb that was composed of four large artillery rounds, 10 gallons of gasoline. Um, and when it hit, uh, I was immediately doused in gasoline and diesel fuel. And I tried to stop, drop, and roll, and it didn't work. I got up and realized, oh, I looked down and that's when I noticed my arm was kind of hanging and uh, yeah, I tried to take a couple steps and stumbled and fell into the dirt and then my medic uh, covered me with a fire blanket and then they started doing um, field trauma work um, and they had to keep me conscious all the way up until we got to uh, Baghdad because of, for fear that if I didn't stay awake then I wouldn't have made it. Mm -hmm. So, um, I remember loading up on the helo and we got under the helo, uh, me and my team leader got, in, or squad leader got under the helo, and, um, I remember the flight medic telling me, you know, you gotta stay with me, you gotta stay with me, and so we hit, um, Baghdad, and then once we got into the, the cache, which is the, uh, med medical area, um, I finally, I just asked the doctor if I could go to sleep, and he pushed me with some sort of pain meds, and mm -hmm. next thing I know, I'm in, uh, San Antonio. Yeah. What was it like uh, seeing the faces of your of your buddies? I mean, you probably I, I, reading some of uh, of what you've written. I, I hear is an interesting perspective because you can't you can't see yourself. You probably can't feel. I mean, you can feel some pain, but I mean, there's your body's working to try to counter that. What was what was the look on their faces when they responded to you? Oh, uh, it was it was horror. Like I don't really know. The way that they looked at me, I wasn't, I didn't think I was going to make it. I mean, they were looking at me like it was, it was devastating. Like I said, I couldn't see myself. Mm -hmm. um, as far as pain, I don't even really remember pain. Um, I think partially because um, instant shock, and then second due to um, the depth of the burns that burned through my sensation nerves immediately. Mm -hmm. But I just remember, I remember the look on my, my squad leader's face more than anybody's because, you know, I'm asking, you know, if I'm going to be okay. And he's looking at me and he's telling me I'm going to be okay, but the look on his face says, you're screwed, dude. <laughs> that's, that's what I saw. I saw that when I was reading. And I, just, I tried to visualize that and I thought, oh my God, that's a situation where I can't, I didn't even fathom that when, you, when you're hurt that bad. And I mean, the only thing I know about it is what I see in movies and... Some of it's true and some of it's not true, but I remember I remember the things, you know, hey, you're going to be all right, and, and just to, to, to see that, but then to probably picture what he was looking like, like, you know, it's not going to be, uh, it's not going to be good. And you, you had some battles there, especially early on, too, yeah. with, with, with getting, getting through that and, and, and overcoming that. What was it like when you, I guess, when you finally realized you were, you were back home? There's probably a hundred emotions that are going through your mind about, you know, there's guilt and other things like that. Talk about that a little bit. Um, it was a lot of it for the first few weeks is really hard to remember just because of um, I was in a medically induced coma and then I came out of the coma and they kept me on really, really, really good pain <laughs> And uh, um, on top of that, there were some other drugs that they kept us on just to try to keep us kind of in a state to where we're not really thinking about how bad everything is, we're just trying to keep going. Walking, kind of walking, yeah. walking was a big one. I remember um, walking to the hospital, and I actually, in my mind, I remember going outside uh, into the parking lot and stuff, but really I was just going through the main level floor, <laughs> and I was looking out into the parking lot. <laughs> So I was like, it's crazy, like, oh, I'm out there. And I talked to my mom, I was like, Mike, you, you never went outside. Like, oh. <laughs> well, right. part of that is because Scott kept 
kept his leg until uh, December 29th. So Scott actually walked on his leg. So he, okay. when he's saying walking, he actually did walk. It was uh, it, until December, actually December 24th, we almost lost him due to the infections and he had to go back on life support. And finally it became clear on December 29th that they were going to have to remove his leg to save his life. Uh, because that, it was so severely burnt um, that you could see the, I mean, the tendons, the bones, everything was burnt on top. The bottom of his foot was perfect. It was beautiful. It was all pink and looked gorgeous. But it was burnt so severely down that the infection was just raging through the, it would go down through the leg and come back up. He still had some blood flow. And uh, so when he's talking about walking, he actually walked for, you know, four weeks, three weeks. And they actually get them up within the first week and a half after they're there. No matter how severely injured they are, they have them up. They have them walking. We walked him all through the hospital. He still holds the record for walking the farthest in this as severe as he was. So, and uh, that had to have been just. I, I can't imagine what you were going through, Scott, when they 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 said they had to, you know, remove remove part of your leg. What was that I, like? When you, I don't even remember. Um, Mom, my mom tells me that you know every day she had to remind me that they took your foot, and every day I'd be mad at her. But I, I honestly don't remember uh, when I really started to realize and really comprehend things. It's once I got to the step down unit after I was at ICU, um, and that's when I was like, you know, just trying to deal with everything. Like, oh God, what am I going to do now? And that's when the the family relationships really get really are important and that's what I you know and, and reading about what you went through I that's something that really came through when I was reading how strong how you don't didn't realize how strong you were even after all you'd been through you still didn't realize how strong you were until you were going through it no um, I you know people are like oh you're, you're a strong person how do you know you're that strong and I'm like I had no idea until I had to live with it um, and then once you're dealt that hand, it's adapt and overcome and become, try to try to keep driving on, try to keep pushing. Um, it's kind of a military installed mentality. Um, biggest thing is probably dealing with is probably the guilt was even more. And it was my guilt of I left my guys. Even though I'm, you know, laying here almost dead my problem was I, I was not where I was supposed to be. I wanted to go back. Um, I needed to be there to, you know, watch my guys back. Is that something you still go through today, Scott? Um, there's times. You know, I feel like I, I, no, I wasn't done. I didn't get the opportunity to uh, complete what I was supposed to. We want to talk a little bit about uh, what you're going through, too, because it's... Uh, you know, your struggles are also his struggles too. What has this meant to you to be to be involved uh, in in tempered steel? And we can get to that uh, right now. We'll talk a little about about what this is and about your involvement uh, with it. Well, what tempered steel is is a uh, nonprofit organization that Scott and I started to combat the negative feedback or negative comments that we uh, received um, due to Scott's injuries. The way people would look at him and they would shy away. We've had people walk into walls trying to avoid looking at him. We've had people actually fall into his wheelchair, into his lap, um, staring so hard. Or after they've went past in the mall, there's uh, been really rude comments, almost like we're both we both can't hear because of his injuries, you know, so they make these comments that they don't think we can hear. Um, and so in dealing with that and then also in, in just seeing how the rest of the wounded military members were being treated in San Antonio, we decided that we needed to do something to change that. Yes, they're, they're physically changed. Yes, they can look pretty horrific due to their injuries, but these are the men and women who have fought for this country. These are the men and women who have put their lives on the line, and they deserve everyone's respect and understanding. And not only that, 
they're still human beings. They're human beings with emotions and feelings, and they're dealing enough with how they look on a personal level to have people not treat them or show them the respect that they need or that they deserve was unacceptable to me. So we started Tempered Steel, and what we do is we send out our wounded military members to talk to schools, community groups, and organizations about the stories behind the scars and wounds of war. And in doing that, they're showing that through their injuries and their recovery, that they are they have something to offer. That they can show that your worst day ever doesn't match their worst day ever. So, especially with high schools, our guys really get into, you know, oh, your boyfriend broke up with you today, right. you have a bad hair day, you have a zit on your face. It's not going to matter tomorrow. You need to learn, or they need to learn, and they are educating, showing that you can get through this. You can get through anything. All you have to do is put your mind to it. And on top of that, that anyone else who looks different is the same. So um, we're helping disabled and disfigured individuals everywhere. And that's our goal, is to close that gap between the disabled and disfigured military world and the civilian world. So by these guys going out and talking, they're saying, OK, if you meet or there's someone in your school that's in a wheelchair, are you shunning them? Are you refusing to get to know them just because they're in a wheelchair? We actually had one of our speakers who was severely burned across the face and the head. We got a call about an eight-year-old little boy who um, was burned in a house fire and was being mistreated by his school. So they called us and asked us to send a speaker, a burn victim out there. We sent Bobby Hinline out to talk to that school. And he showed them that being burned can be cool. Having scars can be cool. That the scars, the, the physicality is not who they are. It's who they are inside. It's looking beyond the scars. It's looking behind the scars. It's looking into their eyes. It's seeing who they are. Talk a little bit uh, about what you're doing now, today, and just in the near future, what's, what's coming up for, uh, for you guys and your involvement with this. Well, I have speakers. I have a speaker speaking Sunday in Winfield, Kansas, and then he's speaking in Osborne, Kansas. In December, I have a speaker in, I'm sending from San Antonio to Louisiana. Next week, Scott and I will be in Orlando, Florida uh, to speak to Northrop Grumman, and then we travel two hours south to go talk to a 1,000 students at Bradenton Middle School in Florida. I didn't bring a schedule. Oh, yeah. that's okay. I, you know, I get requests every day for speakers. Mm -hmm. um, we're booked clear out till March right now. How did you get the word out about your organization, and how do people come in contact with you? Well, if they go to temperedsteelinc.org, we have a speakers page where people can apply to be a speaker if they're a wounded Iraq or Af Afghanistan veteran. And they can apply for a speaker to come into their school or their community group or their organization. Um, we are completely donation funded. Um, so donations help to, to for travel, for meals, for our guys. They can call 800-294-5039. This has been Sunday Spotlight on...